we have uh, a number of guests that we're they're bringing in as part of Savvy Sounds for this month. Um, we're trying to profile all the different concert series that are going on across the municipalities. Um, and one of the biggest ones is obviously the one that's happening right here in Gastonia. Tell us a little bit about your role, because this is kind of a partnership between the city and then um, the East Rotary Club of, of Gastonia, right? That's, that's right. Uh, so for, I think this is our eighth season uh, of concerts that uh, Gastonia East Rotary has put on okay. uh, in conjunction with the city of Gastonia. Um, this year's a little bit different than we've done in the past. Uh, we wanted to we wanted to really make sure that there was something for everybody here. Um, and we went out into the community and we got more feedback, like what kind of music do you want to hear? What kind of things do you want to have? Um, what would what would uh, allow you to bring your entire family out? And, um, and so we got a lot of really positive feedback from the community, a lot of band suggestions from the community. I mean, we reviewed over 60 bands. Oh, wow. And, um, and we came up with a new format for it this year uh, that really makes it open to everybody in Gastonia. It really it makes it inviting for everybody. So I noticed he, he brought in the poster, and so it's, it's very much kind of um... – colorful it's eye-catching and when you look at the lineup i mean you guys have both a a main act and then kind of an opening act for each one of the four concerts you've got set up right that's right uh what we wanted to do we wanted to make sure that we featured uh up-and-coming musicians from right here in gastonia um and so a lot of our opening acts are local people that are that you'll see playing the restaurants and bars in the area and they're really great musicians that just kind of need a shot yep. um i'm really excited about our may 19th concert with garrett huffman opening for on the border the ultimate eagles experience uh, they're always a huge hit at the concert series yep. but then uh garrett if you've ever heard him play he's yeah. a, he's this kid in a guitar and he's just fabulous he's amazing yes, he is. And so, um, so you know, that's that felt like a good pairing. Um, and then um, we're doing some different things. You know, we've had a lot of rock and and uh, a lot of Carolina Beach music sure. in the past. And so we wanted to kind of open that up and and bring in more. So uh, June twenty third, we're having our summer solstice night. That's uh, what you did where there. We've, where we've got some. Yeah, we're. I'm I'm a dad, so I, I do bad yes, things all dad the jokes. time. So. Um, but uh, we've got the Voltage Brothers coming in and then uh, Emerald Empire with them. And they've got uh, a lot of great funk and soul and R&B, a, a huge amount of energy. Uh, with every band that we've invited in, uh, we went out and, and extensively looked through their YouTube presence. We, we looked through their social media presence to see what kind of show they were going to put on. Not, not only were they good musicians, because there were a ton of great musicians right. that we looked at, but uh, are they able to really, are the audiences having fun? Yeah, are they having a huge. great time at the show? And so that's what we wanted to do. Um, then uh, we're going to skip July because the city's got something going on in July. Yep. Um, you know, just a little tiny little fireworks show or something. Yeah. Like I, I mean, I there's a small holiday that happens <laughs> right. there. Um, and so um, so we're going to, you know, the city's going to do their thing in July. And then we'll be back in August with Caleb Davis. Mm. And he's going to do his Dancing Through the Decades show where he goes through and does music from every decade from like the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s. Wow. And, uh, and kind of progresses through. But then opening up for them is fan favorite Tangerine Trees, which they do, they are like the best Beatles band that I have ever heard. Yeah, uh, I've they, heard really good things yeah, about them. And they play a lot. Um, uh, I've seen they're playing at the Rooster and, mm -hmm. and other places around town. Uh, and then in September 15th, this is going to be so much fun. We're going to have 80s night. Yeah, 80s night at the pavilion, and we've got kids in America, and um, and and they are they put on a phenomenal 80s show. It's like like if you walked into Cindy Lauper's apartment or something, you know, it, it's this nice. this massive 80s show that they put on, and they've got their special guest Akita, and uh, just amazing high energy music going on. Uh, but the the series isn't just about the music. And like I said, this is uh, we wanted to do more family oriented stuff this year. Right. 
And so um, not only do we have great music, uh, which, by the way, if you're if you're looking for, um, if you want to know what these bands sound like, uh, you can go to the concerts page at GastoniaEastRotary.org, okay. and you can see videos of every band that we've got playing. Well, Drew Horing with uh, the East Gastonia Rotary Club, thank you so much for, for coming in, for talking to us about the Gastonia Concert Series. And um, for everybody, we're going to put those dates back up on the screen, but May 19th on the border and Garrett Huffman, June 23rd, the Summer Solstice event with the Voltage Brothers and Emerald Empire, August 11th, uh, that's the Dancing Through the Decades show with Caleb Davis and Tangerine Trees opening up. And then September 15th wraps it all up at the Rotary Pavilion. That's Kids in America with Akita, uh, 6 to 10 p.m., Rotary Pavilion in downtown Gastonia. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Thank you, Drew. So um, when you're putting together Mount Holly Nights, uh, what, what's the schedule? Is this kind of a once a month sort of thing? Yes, typically. So um, for May, we have one in May. We actually have two in June with one being our fireworks celebration. So at the beginning of the June, sorry, beginning of June, June 9th, and then June 29th for the fireworks. And then we don't have anything in July. And then we have August 11th, September 8th, and then October 13th. Got it. Um, so what can people expect when they come out for Mount Holly Nights? What is what is kind of a, a, a typical evening look like? You know, what, what should they prepare for in terms of parking? Are there any kind of vendors or food trucks? Yeah, so um, parking, obviously won't be able to have any street parking. We have it shut down from Central Avenue to Catawba. Okay. Um, but we have like 10 to 12 food trucks scheduled for every night this year. Um, And then opening acts, we're really excited about those this year. We got a lot of really good applications and have locked those in with some local artists to start the night off before our headliner bands come on. What does the typical lineup look like? Do all the events start at the same time in the the evening? Yep. So we'll have opening acts starting at 6 p.m. and they'll perform for an hour with the headliners like coming on around seven might be a little bit after that, but headliners will start at that seven o'clock mark for all of them. Sounds good. And uh, for people that are coming out, do they need to bring lawn chairs? Is there kind of seating available? What, what does that look like? So we don't have any seating for the concerts. We'll have tables and stuff like that set up for the food aspect of the Mountain Holly Nights, but um, definitely more than welcome to bring lawn chairs and set them up on Main Street um, and in like the parking lots in front of um, Stowe Insurance and things like that to be able to listen to the bands. Cool. Well, awesome. Abby Miller with uh, Mount Holly. Thank you so much for coming in, for joining us. Uh, Mount Holly Nights is the summer concert series. And where can people go to get more information about it? Yeah. So if you um, check out our website, mtholly.us, um, everything is under the special events tab, which falls under parks and recreation. It's a little bit hard to find sometimes, but if you just go to departments, parks and rec, and then under special events, all the information will be there. Perfect. Abby, thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jody Franklin. I'm the Parks and Recreation Director in Bessemer City. I've uh, been there for about 30 years, and uh, probably about nine years ago, we started our summer concert series, and uh, it has kind of blossomed into what we like to think is one of the the, the better event venues and um, one of the better uh, band lineups throughout the uh, throughout the region here. So how do you go about kind of recruiting bands to play an event like this? Is it something where, you know, obviously you said you've done this for several years. Do you have some kind of fan favorites that you always like to try to bring back or are you you mixing it up each year? We do uh, take in consideration um, bands that uh, a lot of our regulars uh, recommend to us. Um, Each year I go to the uh, festival and events um, conference over in Charlotte and they have what they call the show fest, which... Uh, showcases several bands um, on on one of the evenings there and uh, a lot of times we'll pick up a band there um, but a lot of the hot bands that have come through in the past that have really uh, been well received we typically try to get them back if at all possible for sure Uh, we have our 35th annual down home festival which Uh takes place may the 12th and 13th and uh, we do have some bands lined up for that we have on friday night we have the east coast party band and then on Saturday night, we have a, a group out of Shelby called Dirty Grass Soul that have really been uh, making a move um, in, in the uh, southeast, southeast region. So uh, we're excited about both of those bands.
And then talking about events kind of later on in the summer, I mean, you're continuing the concert series, but then you've also got another kind of uh, joint festival with 4th of July. You get another one basically at the tail end of, of summer with the Brew and Q Festival that you guys are bringing back too, right? Yes. Um, the, we, 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 have a, um, we typically do the fourth Saturday of each, um, each month, April through September. Uh, this year is a little bit different. Um, we had an event um, – our, our July the 4th event or our July the 4th celebration we're doing on June the 30th. Uh, we'll have a band uh, that night and have fireworks at the end of that show. Uh, also on June the 16th, I believe it is, we have our Juneteenth festival. Uh, we'll have a band there, which is the Ace Party Band. Um, and then uh, the our second annual barbecue contest, it's our Brew and Q Festival. Uh, we'll end our summer concert series, I uh, think it's September the 23rd. What better way to end the summer yeah. with some barbecue and some live music? Right, and it's a barbecue competition, so it's a lot to, uh, a lot for the people to come out and see how these barbecue teams uh, compete. Uh, it's a sanctioned event with the Southern Barbecue Network, and again, it's our second year doing it. Last year was a uh, got us off to a, uh, a good start, and we're hoping to build on that momentum from last year and make this event this year even better. Absolutely. So if people are coming out for the summer concert series in, in Bessemer City, where are they going to head? What do they need to know in terms of parking? Do they need to bring chairs? Yes. Um, we have an event, uh, an event venue that is a stage right in the center of town. It's at the um, uh, 114 West uh, Virginia Avenue. It's in our center city district there. And um, we, we do have limited seating, but we do encourage people to bring their own uh, chairs. Uh, people bring their chairs as early as eight thirty nine o'clock in the morning to get their seats. Wow, and, uh, that's some dedication. Yeah, they, they, they bring them out and get their seats set, and uh, the bands typically t- uh, kick off about 6.30, but we advertise the event from 6 to 10, Okay, uh, but they typically kick off around 6.30, end around 9.30, and that way we're able to, uh, um, to get you know, people in and out uh, before t- before the ten o'clock hour, um, and if if you uh, if you find one of our cards around town, we do on several of our concerts what we consider our concerts and cruise ins. We do have uh, classic cars that are brought into town for those concerts, okay. and uh, they get um, of course they get uh, VIP parking in the in the streets there, and we. Uh, it's not a judged uh, car show. Uh, it's just a chance for people to bring their cars out, let um, let car enthusiasts look at them, and um, just enjoy them. Um, the mayor does do a mayor's choice that we present a trophy to at each one of those. That's awesome. Um, yep. So it's just a, another added element to our concert series. Good deal. So Friday, May 12th and Saturday, May 13th, it's the Down and Home Festival. Uh, on the 12th, there's East Coast Party Band. And then on the 13th, 30 Grass Soul is going to be playing. Saturday, May 27th, you got Gary Louder and Smoking Hot. Friday, June 16th, for that Gene Team Festival that you mentioned, that's the Ace Party Band. Uh, Friday, June 30th, uh, is going to be Too Much Sylvia, and that's part of your 4th of July celebration in the fireworks mm-hmm. show. Uh, Saturday, July 22nd, Jim Quick and the Coastline Band. Saturday, August 26th, the Extraordinaires, and then rounding it out um, with that highly anticipated second annual Brewing Q Festival on Saturday, September 23rd on the border. We'll be closing things out. Exactly. Yes. Uh, we, uh, we look forward to having any visitors in our town. Look forward to any, anyone that's uh, interested. Uh, call the Parks and Recreation Department. We'll give you any more information on it that, uh, that you may need. And uh, life is good in Bessemer City. And thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Jody. We mm-hmm. appreciate it. Thank you. Morgan, thank you so much for, for coming in and telling us a little bit about what to expect from Friday Night Live this year. Um, just to, to start with, uh, you guys were supposed to kick off on April 28th and mother nature didn't really approve of that plan. Apparently. (laughs) Yes. Unfortunately, mother nature had a different plan than we did. Uh, so our April 28th concert has been rescheduled to July 14th and that is Thurston Howell of the yacht rock genre. Okay. So how do you go about kind of picking out some of these bands? Are, are they fan favorites? Is, you know, is it a kind of a, a combination of feedback from from fans and trying to mix in kind of new bands? Sure. Some of the bands we have this year are repeats from last year because they were fan favorites. So you will see Java Band again in Belmont as well as 20 Ride. Um, for selecting bands, we rely heavily on our board and volunteer input. And we also use a booking agent. Okay. 
And and looking at the poster, I mean, you guys have a two-time Grammy award-winning band coming in, and and Zydeco music. What is that what, it, for for people that are uninitiated into the Zydeco genre? Sure, I was one of the uninitiated sure. of the Zydeco genre. Yeah. Um, so you will have to research it for yourself, but it is a very unique genre. And being a two-time Grammy Award winner, I think we will have a great turnout on June 16th and encourage you to come. So you guys used to do this along Main Street, but you're, you're kind of changing venues this year, right? Yes. We used to have the Friday Night Live concerts on South Main Street, and they have now relocated to the upper field of Stowe Park, which is behind the old Belmont Middle School. So if folks are coming out, they'll, they'll probably want to bring like lawn blankets or, or folding chairs or just something comfortable to sit on, essentially. Yes. Bring a seat, lawn chair, blanket. And uh, come early to claim your spot. But they don't have to worry about food. You guys have that covered, right? Exactly, yes. We have food vendors that will line the upper field. We have um, main dish food vendors. They will have hot dogs, hamburgers, chicken tenders, you name it. As well as specialty food vendors where you can find your favorite ice cream and snow cones. See, that's going to be my daughter's thing. It's just like, oh, all the sweet stuff. Perfect. <laughs> um, so uh, concerts each evening um, start at 6, but then the bands take the stage at 7? Correct. Okay. Yes, we'll have a DJ from 6 to 7, and then each band takes the stage at 7 p.m. This is a concert series that has been going on for a while, right? Right. This has uh, been going on for about 20 years. Um, it's changed hands of organizations over the years. It started off with the Merchants Association, and now it is hosted by the Downtown Belmont Development Association. Got it. And there's, I mean, there's a lot of work that goes into putting on these type of events, right? Right. Yes, we work very closely with Public Works and the police department, and believe it or not, each concert takes about 30 volunteers. That's, wow. Yes. <laughs> so th this is not just something where you kind of snap your fingers and go, okay, the band can set up over there and people can come and it'll be fine. Yes, it is a bit more complex than that. <laughs> Absolutely. Anything else about the concert series that, that I didn't ask about that you wanted to mention? Yes, please follow Belmont Main Street underscore DBDA on Facebook and Instagram. And you can always check out www.cityofbelmont.org slash community events for more information on times, food vendors, and any weather cancellations that might occur. Awesome. Morgan, thanks so much for coming in and talking with us. Thanks for having me. So you guys have four different concerts coming up. It's um, in the historic Dallas Town Square. Um, you've got Daniel Jeffers on May 13th, coming up Brass on June 10th, uh, Gary Louder and Smoking Hot on August 12th, and then the Catalinas on September 16th. And I know that you're um, kind of new to the town of Dallas, but how do you go about kind of putting a, a, a summer concert series together for, for the town? Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, shout out to Dallas first and foremost. Just the community as a whole uh, has been so instrumental in getting me, you know, from point A to point B and bringing this concert series together. Uh, it's really the camaraderie and the community there that really pull it, you know, together for me. Um, just, you know, lending a helping hand. And, yeah, it's been great um, just being able to network and people that are so open and friendly. And it, it's really cool to see a community come together and really bring this music festival and all these acts together. And uh, it's a really great thing to see. Well, and it's, I mean, it's one of those things we, we've talked to people kind of across Gaston County at, at different municipalities. And it seems like one of the common themes with this summer's concert series is, you know, it's, it's a really great chance to bring people out to just kind of spend time with their neighbors. And especially, you know, now that we've come out of COVID and like just being able to do real life again and be able to go to concerts, like it's something that like I never would have thought I would have taken for granted, but I, I certainly don't anymore. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think everyone was kind of thrown through a loop when we uh, we were stuck inside for however long it was, seemingly in a, an eternal time period. There. Right. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, I think a lot of people have had that realization and it's really great that we can come back kind of full throttle and bring everybody out and, uh, you know, just have a good time once again. So I know on the on the flyers for it, it says to bring your lawn chairs. So I mean, when you're when you're coming out, um, we're looking at what a seven o'clock start time for most of the concerts. Yeah, around six to to nine. Six you to know, nine. so it, it kind of varies based on the uh, concert date. Okay. Um, but yeah, that is the rough time frame. Um, so yeah, when we come out, it'll be behind the uh, old Dallas uh, courthouse there, and then it also is in front of the Pickle, which is the restaurant right there. Um, there's that little road we will have completely blocked off. You can bring lawn chairs and uh, set up, and uh, yeah, there's going to be plenty of festivities for everyone to enjoy. So it should be a, a cool sight. 
Do you guys work to bring out like uh, any food trucks or anything like that? Yeah, certainly. So we're actually going to have uh, at our you know majority of our concerts, we'll have you know a handful of food trucks and various items to pick from. Uh, we actually have an additional concert on July fourth, uh, and that brings in our biggest crowd. From there, we're actually going to have you know a plethora of other food trucks and other things to do as well. So that'll be nice. our biggest event. Yeah, it seems like uh, any time that you've got a summer event, any time that you can uh, throw something up in the sky and make it explode, that's that's a big <laughs> big attraction. Yeah, you know, I think uh, down here, specifically in North Carolina, it seems to be a re <laughs> reoccurring trend. Just, so. just wait until you go across the border in South Carolina, where even more stuff's legal. That's when they just blow up anything they can oh, find. Man, you love to see it. Well, <laughs> I, I'm looking forward to seeing it in Dallas here, and uh, I think everyone's gonna have a good time, and uh, myself included. So absolutely. Um, so we talked about the chairs. We talked about the axe. Um, anything else in terms of like, you know, parking or anything else that people need to know if they're interested in, in, in coming out to the concerts? Nothing too crazy. Uh, I'm very fortunately for everyone that's going to be there, including myself and, you know, all the uh, wonderful people that are helping pulling the event together. Uh, you know, the Dallas Square, um, the town square rather, is actually, you know, surrounding the uh, courthouse there. So there's plenty right. of parking, you know, on those main roads and off of, uh, you know, the not so main roads. And, uh, you know, there's definitely spots for people to be. So awesome. <laughs> Can't beat it. Good deal. Well, Nick, thanks so much for, for joining us. We wish you guys the best of success with your summer concert series. And, uh, uh, geez, it's, it, I can't believe it's summer already, more than anything else. I right. mean, so, yeah, talking about summer concerts already, talking about Fourth of July and, and uh, Carolina barbecue. So, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's an exciting time of year. Right, right. Well, thank you, Adam. I appreciate you guys for uh, having me here and uh, everyone else here and uh, every, everyone listening. Look forward to seeing you in Dallas. Absolutely. Thank you, Nick. All right, thank you.